Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections to design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and trux connection types for a variety of different steel design codes. In this series of videos, we'll be focusing our attention on the steel connection design workflow for designing shear connections for a variety of different beam to column and beam to girder joints. In RAM connection standalone, different joints and different connection templates are compatible with certain types of member properties and framing options. All of these options are considered when we set up the joints that we'll be using to demonstrate the shear connection design workflow. For this video, we will be focusing our attention on single plate shear connections for both beam to column and beam to girder joints. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application. And as you can see, I've already opened up the sample model that was supplied with this training. This model already contains several beam to column and beam girder joints with different configurations. If you're performing any of the hands-on exercises using this sample model, please feel free to change any of the joint geometry to customize the connection design and review the different capabilities within RAM connection standalone. For this session, I'm going to be focusing on designing single plate shear connections in RAM connection standalone. And I'm going to start with joint number one, which is a beam column flange joint with both a beam and column shape of an I-shaped section. The shear loads have already been applied to this joint as well. Now, a single plate shear connection can be assigned directly through the templates area or by using a basic or connection design workflow. If I were to look in the templates area, I would be looking for the single plate BCF connection table. This will be a single plate beam column flange. Now, if you don't see the templates area on your screen, you can go to the home tab in the ribbon toolbar and ensure the templates icon is currently selected. Now within this table, I see all the different connection types that are standard within RAM connection standalone. They all use a standard nomenclature. Here for this first one, I could see SP for single plate. Next, I see BCF for beam column flange. I'll see the thickness of the plate, which is a half inch thick plate for the template I've selected. And then I'll see the bolting information. Here I could see 2B1, which means two one inch diameter bolts. Now, if I want to use a basic or smart connection workflow, I can go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. And the single plate shear connection is available in both basic and the smart connection workflow. Let me start with a basic connection workflow, and I'm going to come over here and select the basic SP connection type. Now, as a reminder, a connection, a basic connection workflow means that you're asking the program to search through a list of predefined connection templates until it finds one that works well for both the loading and the geometry you currently have applied to the currently selected joint. If you wanted to use a smart connection workflow, what you would allow RAM connection to do is to perform an iteration to optimize certain connection pieces, such as maybe weld size or thickness of plates, for example. Once the connection design is complete, we're going to go ahead and click the close option. And we can see that RAM connection standalone has assigned a connection to this joint. Here we could see it is a half inch plate with four B1, that would be four one inch diameter bolts. Now, if you wanted to modify any of the connection pieces, you can click on the edit icon. So in the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then we're going to edit our shear connection. What this will do is it'll bring us to the connection pad for the currently selected joint. Now, what we're going to notice in the connection pad is over at the left hand side, we have our data area. Now, several of the different parameters were taken from the program, either through the joint data, loading information, and also our code selection information. These pieces of information will have a little blue arrow next to them, meaning that you can review the information that was supplied for those fields in the connection pad, but you should really go ahead and change those in another place 
in the program and the program won't save that information if you change it here because it really would affect either the general configuration or the joint data. What you can do is you let's go ahead and scroll on down and see the single plate connection information. So here we can see as far as the connector goes, we can modify things like the plate thickness and material, the bolting information, the types of bolts and the welds that are used in this particular connection type. Now for this model, I've already have a passing connection design. I can see that it's passing because up in the ribbon toolbar, I'll be able to see the interaction ratio for the currently selected joint and it will be color coded to indicate the status of the connection. Mine is in green, which means it's passed all code checks and did not produce any warnings. If I received an interaction ratio that was less than one, but this was indicated in yellow, it would mean that maybe a warning was issued. If it was in red, it would mean it's failing the code check and then you're gonna to want to rectify that before detailing your connection for your final design. Let's also take a look at our connection report. So here I'm gonna click on the results icon and I could see the steel connection report. Here I'd see all the geometric considerations that were checked, their design status, and then I can also see the design check information along with the global critical strength ratio. Now if I wanted a little additional information in this report, I can click on the view formulas icon and then all of the equations and code sections and variables that were used to arrive at these results would then be displayed. Let's go ahead and close out of the connection report. The last thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and take a look at the DXF view. Here I'll be able to see the full detailing of the connection. I can modify the layers and the font size and I can also export this to a DXF for my detailing purposes. Now, if I made any changes to the connection design, I would then go ahead and click the save icon in the ribbon toolbar. For this exercise, I didn't make any changes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of the connection pad. I'm satisfied with my design and I'm ready to move on. Let's go ahead and move on to the next joint within the sample model. Here I have a beam column web joint, again, with both a I-shaped beam and column section, and this joint has shear load imposed upon it. Let's go ahead and assign a connection type to this one. Again, we're gonna go with the basic connection type, and I'm gonna go with the basic SP connection. Again, RAM connection is going to assign a shear connection, and we can finish this process off by clicking close. Now, if I wanted to review this in a little bit of a better perspective, I can hold down my right mouse button and I can spin it around so I can get a better view of what's actually happening here. Now, in addition to being able to see the results in the connection pad, I'm also able to see the interaction ratio and the status of the connection design right in the joint selection area. If you wanna be sure that this is the controlling or critical load condition, you can go to the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar and ensure that this icon is currently selected. Let's also return to the connection pad to edit the beam column web joint that we currently have selected. I'm gonna to go to the Design tab of the ribbon toolbar, click on the Edit icon, and then I'm gonna edit the shear connection. Now within the connection pad, again, I can review all the input information and also I can modify any of the single plate or a few other beam parameters. Now by default, it went ahead and detailed this beam column web joint with basically the beam coming up to the column web and then applying a shear plate here. Now we do have another option for this type of connection, which would be to do an extended shear plate. To ask for that type of detailing, let's go to the plate type and this time let's go ahead and select extended. And then I'm gonna also scroll up within the beam information and find this parameter. So the, here it says the beam edge will be inside the support flanges. So if I wanted to try to see if I can make that detailing work by pulling the beam out so we wouldn't have to perhaps cope the beam or worry about if the flanges of the beam were interfering with the column, I could go with this type of connection design as well. Now for my currently selected joint, I can see that when I make those changes, it actually puts me more into a failing condition. Now I have a couple options here. If I want my original detailing back, I could just hit the cancel button and exit out of the connection pad and keep it as it was. Or I can also come down here and possibly change some additional parameters to get to a passing connection design. 
For this particular joint, I'm going to say, actually, I prefer the original detailing better. So I'm just going to go ahead and close out of here, and I'm not going to save any changes. Let's go ahead and move on to joint number five for this particular model. This is a beam girder joint with both I-shaped beam and girder sections, and it contains a shear reaction. This time I'm going to assign a smart connection type. I'm going to go to the assign icon, go to smart connections, and I'm going to find the smart SP icon. A smart connection has been assigned, and we'll click close. Now, as a reminder, for a smart connection design, basically what I'm doing is I'm asking RAM connection to perform an iteration on certain connection pieces, such as, for this one, it would be the plate thickness, the bolt size, and the weld size to come up with an optimal solution. Let's go ahead and review this connection in the connection pad. Again, go to the design tab in your ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then we can edit our shear connection. Now, just as we had seen for the beam column web joint, we do also have the option to doing more of an extended plate for this. So let's go ahead and also make those changes here. I'm going to change the plate type from standard to extended. And I'm going to come up within the beam information and say that the beam edge is not inside the support flange. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change there. Now what we can see that an additional parameter that I should consider doing is to change the coping when I pull this out. So here I'm going to say, okay, let's change this coping to a non-coped top flange. And then we can get that detailing. Now again, I can also go through some of the parameters and make some additional changes. Now we have an additional option also available for a beam girder joint. Here you can see in the beam section, we can modify the vertical alignment here. So here it's defaulting to a top condition. I can also move it down to say the girder is hitting the mid, the centroid of the girder is basically hitting the centroid of the beam. So I can make those changes as well. And then to get to a passing connection design, you can see I can modify uh, things like plate thickness, I can modify my bolting information, and also my welding information. Now again, I'm going to say for this particular connection design that I like the original detailing better. So I'm going to close out of here after exploring my options, and I'm not going to save any changes. Now at this point, this concludes our process for assigning a single plate shear connection to both beam column and beam girder joints in RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.